Hey guys, this is Shaylee, our sister-in-law. Um, we are getting ready to do a fun project here. We've been wanting to redo this room in our house for a while and Shaylee does DIY projects all the time. <laughs> um, we will link her profile. You guys can go over and follow her if you haven't already. Anyways, so we're gonna come in here and Shaylee's gonna show you kind of her ideas and inspirations for this room. And yeah, come on in, do it. So this is the room that we're getting ready to make over. You guys have probably seen it just a little bit in some of our podcast videos. Um, however, this is the original paint color that we had when we bought the house and we do not love it. <laughs> I am enlisting my sister-in-law, Shaylee, who is with Winter Home Designs. This is her cute little daughter, <laughs> Amelia. She is about two weeks apart from Ephraim. Oh, hey, buddy. Ephraim. <laughs> Ephraim. Our little helpers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we might have some outtakes here. <laughs> Anyways, so we are getting ready to start. We're going to start early, mor early, early morning tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably start working on clearing out all of the stuff in this room. And we will show you all of the things. I'm going to be learning in this process. I've never done this before, so it'll be exciting. Oh, it's a pretty uh, pretty beginner-friendly project, so I think she'll catch on really fast. Awesome. And stay tuned because we are going to have a giveaway at the end of this fun, special episode-filled um, review. So thanks for joining. Hey guys, so we are here today with Winter Home Designs. This is our sister-in-law, Shaylee Winter. Um, we have this room in our house that has really just been kind of a, we close the doors and <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> Anyways, but we are wanting to do a redesign and Shaylee does awesome DIY projects. So I thought it'd be fun for us to do this redesign in, our, in this room, do this project together, and also kind of do a tutorial. She can walk you through all of these cool things and thought that would be fun. So, Shaylee, tell us what we're gonna do. All right, so Sophie reached out to me and asked if I'd help come up with a design for the room. If you follow me, you know that I love board and bat, so that's what we're gonna do in here. Um, and I figured I, it would be a good time to do a tutorial on it. I've never really done an in-depth tutorial on my page. So I thought it'd be fun to just take you along and show you how to do this. It's a very beginner friendly project. So I think you guys will catch on quick and I think you'll love it. We also thought it'd be really fun to do a giveaway. So at the end of this video series for this reveal, we are going to do a special giveaway. So make sure you are following Winter Home Designs and um, we'll go ahead and make sure you're probably already following us <laughs> on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but. Follow both of us and we will we'll lay out kind of how to enter to win that giveaway. So let's get started. So we are going to start off with just showing you what it looks like. We've got a time lapse here of Shaylee doing the first wall. She is assembling the board and batten. She has a tool that um, aligns things across so that she can make sure that she's lining everything up correct. Um, and then once we do this first wall and you can see what it looks like so that you know what board and batten looks like if, if you've never heard of it before then you can kind of see what she's doing and then we'll go in step by step as to the details of it.
So now she is running a line of caulk around all of the parts where the board and batten meet up with the wall to create a seamless transition between the two. Hey guys, we're here on day two. Um, Shaley went ahead and worked on this wall right here. We'll go more into detail and tell, show you step by step how to do it. Um, Shelly's gonna walk us through that and we're gonna finish board and batten on this wall and the one over here behind us that you can't see. And then, um, yeah, so let's go into the tutorial of it now. All right, so when I'm designing a board and batten wall, there's many ways to do it. My personal favorite is I like to design on my laptop first on an app called SketchUp. Um, the way I design it is I take all the measurements of the wall, then I put it all into the app. Um, that way when I'm doing the wall, I have every measurement already laid out so I know where I need to make cuts, what wood I'm using. So on the app, I color code it and I label it with what wood it is. So for instance, these top and bottom pieces are one by fours. Then this top piece is a one by two. And then these, which are called the battens, these are one by threes. So in the app, you can see, I think if I'm remembering right, these ones I had as blue for the one by fours. That way when I'm doing my shopping list, I go through first and I say, okay, I need how many one by three or one by fours. And I go through and I count how many I'm gonna need for that. And then I put it into the shopping cart. And I just go so on like that until I have my whole shopping cart set up. I know exactly how many pieces of wood I need. And there's also another app I'll tell you a little bit more about later. It's a free website you can go to for board and batten walls specifically. It tells you exactly how far to space each batten. It's a really nice app. It also tells you how many pieces of wood you're gonna need, how much it's gonna cost in the end. It's, it's just a super helpful app. So I'll show you that a little bit more later too. Perfect, let's get started. All right, so we're starting on the window wall today. The first thing I like to do is remove the baseboards. You don't always have to remove baseboards for board and batten, but because of the thickness of the wood I'm using and the type of baseboards we have in here already, they would overhang the baseboards and it would look kind of silly. So my favorite thing to do, it's personal preference, I like to pop the baseboards off and put new baseboards on that are the same thickness. Um, where we're working around a window today, I like to tackle the window first and then come at it from the sides of the board and batten. So the biggest thing I like to do is I'm going to take this 1x6 and I'm going to rip it down to fit right here in the window sill and then frame out the rest of the window and then work my way out. So I'll kind of show you that as I go along. Awesome. Okay, so I just want to show you exactly what I meant about how funky it would look if we left the original baseboard. So do you see this gap down here and how it overhangs? I just think that looks really silly and that's not gonna look as professionally done. So that's why I like to take the baseboard off. So let me show you how we take the baseboard off. All right, so first things first, um, when you put baseboards on, you run a bead of caulk along the top here. Um, if I were to just go try and pop this baseboard off, it would peel my paint, it might even peel some drywall. So to get a clean, um, removal, you take a razor blade, or I like this tool, it's like a five-in-one multi-tool. You can get these at Home Depot, any hardware store. Um, so what I do is I go along, I use the sharp end, and I just score the caulk. So you want to push pretty hard, but you're breaking through the caulk. And you go right along the, the wall, and right where it meets the paint, and you just want to score it really well. The next what you're going to do is you're going to turn it this way. You're going to take a hammer and just tap it and it'll slowly start to pop the baseboard away from the wall. I'm gonna to wanna to do that all the way down the wall and then slowly pop it all the way off the wall. So I'll kind of speed this up for you. All right, so once you pop the baseboard off, some of the nails that we're holding it in will be on this baseboard piece. Some will stay in the wall. So if you're going to reuse these or save them at all, or even if you're going to cut it up, I like to bend these down just so I don't poke myself on accident or somebody else. And then to get them out of the wall, so we've got one right here. To get them out of the wall, I just use some pliers and I just grab them and just yank them out of the wall. Sometimes they take a little, you know, maneuvering, 
but if you leave them there, when you try to put the next baseboard piece in, it's going to bump it out away from the wall, so you want to remove all of those extra nails. Yeah. Alright, so all I did is I took this board yeah. and I notched out the corners here so it could slide into the windowsill, and I made sure I went over far enough yeah. that when I put the yeah. side trim up here, it's going to stick out a little bit on this side, just for aesthetic reasons. But So now I'm going to nail these in, and then I'm going to come put a footer down here and a header across the top. Alright, so we got this bottom piece in, I've got this side trim on. Now what I'm going to do is I take the same 1x4s that I do on the side, and I put it down along the bottom right here, just to kind of finish that off. And then what I'm going to do next, to finish the top off, and this is just personal preference, you can do whatever design you want. I'm going to take a 1x2, lay it across the top, then after that's in, I'm going to take a 1x6, again this is just preference, and I'm going to put the 1x6 above that 1x2, and then last I'm going to cap it all with another 1x2. So let me show you how that looks. Alright, now that we've got the window framed out, I'm going to start on the board and batten on the sidewalls. So I've already got everything pre-cut, so I'll take my 1x3, or 1x4, put this up, then I'll take my 1x2, put it on the top, and then add in each batten piece, um, space out accordingly. So that's it. Okay, so now that we've got the board and batten wall built, the last thing you need to do is just go through, and you want to caulk everywhere where the boards meet up with the wall and then you go through and putty wherever the boards meet up with other boards or over any of the nail holes. So um, my favorite caulk is this Alex Fast Dry Caulk. I just love how quick it dries. It goes on really smooth. Um, you get your caulk gun, you take the tip of it, and right here there's a little hole. You can pull the trigger and it just clips the top, and you want to clip it kind of at an angle and kind of a small hole, because if you get too big, it's going to squirt too much out. Then you just slide it in, Pop it in like this, Maybe. and then it's ready to go, and then you just click as you go, and you just want to do like a long steady stream all the way down until you reach the bottom, and then I like to twist this out when I'm done so it doesn't keep leaking. Okay, so my favorite way to clean them up, some people just use their finger, wipe along it, and then wipe it onto a rag. I found it's really easy to use baby wipes, so I'll just take a baby wipe, wrap it over my finger, and just push really tight and drag it all the way down the wall, and then you're done. Alright, so we're now to the finishing touches before we can paint. Um, what you want to do is you want to go find any nails that didn't sink in all the way, and you're going to use a nail tapper and a hammer. You're just going to place the nail tapper right on the head of the nail, and then you're just going to tap it in until it sinks into the wood and you can't fill it anymore. If you leave it sticking out, you're going to notice that when you paint over it. Okay, so once you have all the nails tapped in, you're going to take some spackling or putty, um, and you're just going to take a spackle knife and just brush it right over the top of it. And this one is one that will stay pink, and once it goes white, that means it's dry and ready to, ready to be sanded. Okay, so I actually just put some putty over this one before our last video, and you can see how this one's still pink, but that one is white, so it's ready to be sanded. So you're just going to take a little sanding block and just simply sand right over the top of it. And then you just want to fill it. As long as you can't fill anything there, it's smooth enough to paint over. Alright, so we've gone over everything from installing the board and batten to then punching all the nail holes in, putting the caulk, the putty on. Um, once you have everything sanded, sanded down, you want to wipe it all down with a cloth just so there's no like extra sand, um, putty sand. Then you're ready to paint. So when you paint, my favorite is the Scotch Blue Tape 2 inch. I like to just tape off along all of the edges and if you want you can put a drop cloth down. Um, I'm a little crazy and I don't, I just clean up the mess afterwards. And then you're ready to just go ahead and paint. 
We are almost ready for our reveal tomorrow. We talked about a giveaway. So Shaylee, what do we have to give away? All right, we have teamed together and we're gonna give away this nail gun. This is an 18 um, gauge Brad nailer. This, other than my saw, this is all I've used to put the whole board and batten together. This is the only tool you'll need for board and batten. And so we wanna give one of these away to you guys so you can do the same in your home. So we'll have um, instructions on how to enter that giveaway a little bit later, so be watching for that. We'll do a static post that you'll be able to follow the instructions. Yeah. But the cool thing about this is most nail guns, at least in my experience, you have to have an air compressor. You have the hose coming off that's annoying. You the loud noises yeah, so loud. all of that. This is just plug and play. These are just the standard batteries that you use for any drill gun for Ryobi and it just goes across all of your tools. Yeah. So Ryobi so, is pretty dang awesome. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys for following and yes, we're so thank excited you. for our review. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. All right, so I am just grabbing a couple of things I need for the rest of our project, um, just some painting supplies. And I'm gonna grab a couple of samples of paint really fast and see what Tammy and Colton like the best. And hopefully we will be able to do a reveal later today. If not, we'll do it tomorrow.
Okay, so what we've been working on is we've been applying a layer of primer, and once we get all of it primed up, then we can paint out the, the board and batten and then paint out the color of the wall that we chose. So, that's what we've been doing. We've got one more wall to do and we're getting that much closer. The first step to all of this is um, if there is anything that you are needing to tape off, like we've got our door that we're taping off, we don't want our actual door to be painted, um, tape off all of your lines and then you can have nice clean lines of paint. So Tammy and I stayed up until 2.30 this morning, <laughs> finishing this bottom paint. Looks really, really nice. Now we're gonna pull this paint, the paint tape, and then we're gonna reapply it now that our bottom base is dry. And then we're gonna paint the top. And that is where we're at so far. Here's our final product. It looks so good. We're still figuring out where to put our furniture back, but we love it. Thank you so much, Shaylee. We're so glad that we did this. Looks so much nicer. Definitely better than our purple wall, I have to say. Well, thank you guys so much for following along. This has been a fun project for us. And again, jump over to our Instagram and find our static post that has all of the giveaway details and you have a chance to enter into that and win one of our Ryobi, Ryobi Brad nailers that we've been talking about. So thank you guys so much.